we all want success, yet so many of us are unclear about what success is and how to achieve it. In this video, we look at the starting point and the foundations of being successful, ideas. You want to achieve something, at school, at work, at home, with family or friends, or something totally and completely personal. It's a desire that burns within and in the moment feels like something you must have. We all feel this way at points in our lives, yet so many of us fail to do what's necessary to make that dream into reality. Why is this? Well, in this series I aim to provide clarity on the foundations that all successes are built on, and specifically discuss the distinct differences between these foundations something that people consistently blur the lines between that prevents them from doing what's necessary to garnering significant and long term results. The foundations we'll be discussing as part of the series are number 1. Ideas number 2. Planning number 3. Motivation number 4. Action number 5. Recycling this video will specifically focus on ideas, how they form, why we don't act on them, and what we can do to change that. So let's begin. Number 1. Where do ideas come from? We have a natural tendency to believe that ideas are formed on whims and come from lightbulb moments in life. But this is almost never the case and it's something that we can actually cultivate into a habit. You see, when all things are considered, ideas are often formed from tiny seeds planted into the subconscious mind, something that the film Inception went into fantastic detail about. From here, our conscious mind might not fully acknowledge the growing idea, but our environment, personal growth, learning and development all continue to feed the initial seed to help it take a more clear shape and allow us to be more consciously aware of it. Eventually, that initial seed will take shape to form the fully fledged idea that we're consciously aware of. What we think of as a simple dream is usually the nurtured and cultivated growth that usually takes time. Number 2. Why don't we act on ideas? We all have ideas in our lives, yet the number of people who are able to transition the idea from being a dream to becoming reality are very few and far between. The reason behind this is we fail to act on ideas, so they come and we see them and we even feel them, and then just as quickly they go and an opportunity is lost. In other circumstances, doubt and hesitation to take action on them comes to the fore. We ask ourselves, am I capable? Do I have the resources to make it happen? Or are people going to laugh at me? These doubts and fears are usually where we end it, failing to act because we let our minds stop us, yet in doing so we lose countless opportunities to take action in life towards living a life we want to. Equally as important is that others lose out to see and benefit from the results of these ideas coming to fruition. So we must understand that when we have ideas, we can't let our mind and fears stop us. The more we hesitate, the less likely we will take action. The reason behind this is that our brain is wired to survive, and in order to survive we need to feel comfortable and safe. So when we start feeling fear and anxiety at the daunting prospect of leaving our comfort zone, our brain tries to stop us. This is our natural survival instincts coming to the fore, as in the past these instincts are what helped us survive in the wild. However, today's world is significantly different to the world that our ancestors lived in. The threats to survival back then don't exist today, and as individuals we understand this, meaning when we fail to act on something, we later come to regret the lack of action. The problem for most is that the regret we feel is often far more powerful than the fear we initially felt when the idea came to us. This often leads to other issues that many face in the world today, notably leading to mental health problems. So it's critical to understand that we have to learn to better understand the feasibility of ideas that come to us and when to take decisive action, despite any doubts, so that later on we don't feel the regret of not trying. Number 3. How do we act on ideas? 
So now we have a better understanding of where ideas come from and the reason for not acting on them. What can we do to start changing a dream to reality? Well, first and foremost, cultivate possibilities of forming ideas. This means to try new experiences, test yourself and push yourself beyond your natural comfort zone and cultivate ideas by learning and educating yourself consistently. This helps new concepts to be formed in the mind and helps you to expand your mind. The key then is to note down the ideas. Personally, I find the most effective way of doing this is to keep an electronic ideas journal, which I periodically review. I choose to keep it electronically as it's easier for me to transition towards something to action on, as I work predominantly in the digital space. You see, physically writing or typing ideas benefits us in two ways. The first is that we have it noted down, so we don't need to worry about us forgetting the idea later on, because we can always refer back to the ideas journal to see what ideas we can consider acting on. The second benefit is that studies have shown that when you write ideas down, you're actually more likely to act on them than if you didn't. That's why actions such as journaling and writing to-do lists is such an effective starting point to building successful habits and completing tasks. Once you note down habits, you need to set aside time to assess and review the ideas. This isn't an exercise to feed doubt and hesitations in your mind, but rather build up the beliefs and choose which ideas should be acted on. You see, this proves to benefit us in a couple of ways. The first is that we can identify what we want to focus on and start moving towards a specific and deliberate direction. Chances are that you'll have a multitude of ideas that vary in subjects and interests and trying to take action on all of these will usually result in you failing to build on any of them. In life we need to focus to give time to mastering specific subjects to avoid becoming a jack of all trades and a master of none. Instead you'll garner greater results by becoming a respected authority in a specialist area. The second benefit of assessing ideas is to build up our beliefs on succeeding to making an idea into reality. A belief or idea needs references or evidence to help you commit to believing that you can make it happen. Think of it like a stool, where the seat is the idea or belief and the legs act as the references. The less legs you have, the less stable the stool is. When you take action to sit on a stool that's unstable, the chances of the stool falling or collapsing increases and when it does, you'll be inclined to avoid repeating the same action of sitting on the stool again. However, if the stool has more legs, it becomes more stable as a result. Even if for some reason you fall, you'll be more inclined to take responsibility on your personal failings than to blame the stool itself. The same principle applies to ideas. If you have evidence to show that an idea can come to fruition, during the moments of setback, you'll be more likely to continue working towards achieving it and using the setback as a personal learning experience. The other aspect of assessing that's useful is you can identify the scope and risk. A simple example is many of us fail to act on asking out someone when we're interested due to the fear of rejection. However, when you assess the possibility of taking action, usually the risk is actually minimal, as while rejection might be painful and embarrassing in the short term, in the greater scheme of things and in the scope of your whole life, it has a very small impact on your life, unless you place emphasis on it and allow it to grow into something bigger. So go out, form and note ideas, live life to cultivate them act out to remove any fear and follow through with making them reality. In the next video we'll be looking at planning, but in the meantime I want to know do you have any ideas you wish to make reality? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this please leave a like and share this with others as we aim to help people live life on their terms and subscribe for more content like this. Make sure to hit the bell icon to ensure YouTube notifies you of the latest content. Thanks for watching.